Hi, my name is Zach and I'm a PM at ClickHouse. In this video, I'm going to show you how easy it is to get started loading, exploring, and querying your data in ClickHouse Cloud. Spinning up a ClickHouse Cloud service is super simple. We separate storage and compute so you can store an unlimited amount of data in any single service and you don't need to worry about management or operations. We give you the platform, you just need to load and query your data. Let us worry about the rest. To begin, just select a region. Since I live almost on top of US East 1, I'll go ahead and use that. Then enter a name for your service. And since this is a demo, we'll select development for the service type. For now, I'll set up IP filtering using my current address and click continue. And finally, for security reasons, ClickHouse doesn't save your database credentials after your initial session. So it's always good to download a copy. As you can see, our new service is still provisioning. So I'm going to use an existing service for the rest of the demo, but we'll come back to this one at the end when it's ready. There are a number of options for connecting to your ClickHouse Cloud service, but we recommend using the native SQL console tool to get started. The SQL console is the easiest way to explore, query, and visualize your ClickHouse database, and you don't need any prior SQL experience. For admin roles in a ClickHouse Cloud organization, the SQL console can seamlessly authenticate with your ClickHouse Cloud service. Simply click Connect, and select Open SQL Console. On the initial screen, you'll see a list of tables in your database. In this case, we've got our Hacker News table. From the list, we can expand the table to see its columns or open it to view table data. You can also view table schema information by right-clicking on a table on the list and selecting Show Table Schema. No need to run a SQL query or go digging through system.tables. The SQL console also makes it easy to filter and sort table data without any knowledge of SQL. Let's say we want to view only comments. We can easily filter our table data directly from the table view by clicking the filter button. We'll select type as the column for the filter, equals as the criteria, and enter comment. Now that our filter is applied, you can see that only records with type equal to comment are displayed. Okay, let's say we want to view the most recent comments. We can click the sort button to add a sort. And to sort chronologically, we'll select our time column and select descending order. Now that we've got our table data filtered and sorted, maybe we want to move these filters and sorts to a query and apply further customization. To do so, click the create query button. As you can see, a new query editor tab has been opened and pre-populated with the SQL query returning the data we saw in table view. For now, we'll just modify the query to exclude any comments with no replies. In some cases, we may want to save a query for future reference or for another team member to use. To do this, we'll give our query a name and save it. If we select the query section, we can see that our query is now displayed in a list of saved queries in the left bar. Note that any members of our ClickHouse Cloud organization who have access to this service will be able to open and run this query as well. Okay, now let's try some more interesting queries. To begin, let's check the most frequently used words in Hacker News comments. Navigating back to the Hacker News table view, we can see this words column that holds an array of all distinct words contained within each post. So I think we can accomplish this using a ClickHouse function that unrolls these arrays. Hmm, I actually can't remember which function I need to unroll the arrays. No problem though, the SQL console features ClickHouse specific autocomplete suggestions. So if we type array, we'll see all array operations that are available. Aha, array join is the one I need. Autocomplete will now suggest columns for us when we need the words field. And let's give this an alias for easier reference later. Now we just need to count the frequency of our words. And we'll just complete this query. Okay, I think our query is good to go. Let's go ahead and run it. Now we can see our results. This query is super cool, but these are all just filler words. 
Let's try something more interesting. Maybe we can query the table to check monthly total mentions of different OLAP databases instead. I've actually already written and saved this query in the SQL console. As you can see, it uses some ifs to create a multi-series from a CTE that looks sort of like the query we just ran. So let's go ahead and run this. Ooh, this is starting to take shape. But in some cases, query result data is more easily interpreted using visualization. The SQL console already features basic charting functionality, and we're working on further improvements to the charting experience. Especially if you're coming from the ClickHouse CLI, the SQL console can be an easy way to visualize a trend using a simple chart. Let's build one for this result set. Simply click the chart button in the query result pane toolbar and you'll be presented with a chart configuration pane. We'll select the chart type and drag the desired fields to their corresponding axes. Now we can see exactly how frequencies of each keyword correspond with one another. For good measure, let's quickly build one more chart to visualize all-time OLAP database mentions. I've also got a safe query for this. As you can see, this one probably needs a different chart type, so let's make it a donut chart instead. And voila. Finally, let's go back to the control panel to check on our newly created service. And as you can see, it's all started and ready for use. ClickHouse Cloud makes it incredibly simple to get started querying your data in ClickHouse. Please make sure to sign up for a ClickHouse Cloud trial and take it for a spin. Thanks for watching.